We are now joined by Tyler Reddick, driver of the number 45 Toyota for 2311 Racing. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a wireless mic over to you. We'll start with Bob. Fox Sports, I have a couple. Is it still, is it surreal at all or have you gotten used to seeing Jordan's logo on your hood every week? I mean, it's still, oh, still really cool, obviously. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been nice to do this games that we have, um, especially here the last month or two, right? Like, I really enjoyed the one uh, that we, we ran at the 600. Um, but to be mixing it up like we have and, and doing, putting it, to, putting it to work like we have been has been really, really cool. So, yeah, this car's really exciting, too. I think, you know, doing the aid and um, all, all the things around that shoe and, and the design on their car is really exciting for this weekend. Into the, you haven't been to the championship before, before. Your organization hasn't been there before. So what makes you think that you can make it this year? I think when you look at um, our speed and, and the things that we really are good at, uh, our ceiling's there right now, I think. Um, it's just a matter of putting it together on the racetrack and um, one, one weekend at a time, right? Uh, obviously, if you do everything right, you can, you can win and get there. Um, but, but I think, too, the way that we've been scoring points in these playoffs, we've been strong in that front, too. So we have paths. We have certainly we have two ways we can get there. I'd like to get there the first way uh, so we can really focus on Phoenix. Um, but we have options, I feel like. So um, obviously, to, to win races, you got to run up front all day. And if you do that, you're going to score points. So you know, I think they're kind of hand in hand with one another. And um, yeah, we look at Vegas and Homestead and even Martinsville. You know, all three tracks um, are good tracks. I would say the first two are good for me, right? Martinsville is really good for the team in Toyota and uh, really up my game when we went there in the spring. So I feel good about the tracks we have up ahead. And then Phoenix, you know, at the end of that race, we were battling Larson and, and Byron uh, for the win there too. So, I mean, I feel like we've been, we're really strong at these last remaining tracks. Zexter Neal, NASCAR.com. Tyler, um, Toyota has four of these last eight um, positions in, uh, in this round. Um, I think the conversation a lot of times is Toyota getting um, outnumbered in a lot of ways, but to, to have the, the strength of field here, uh, to, what does that mean to you, the manufacturer, and, and the team? Yeah, I, I imagine it means a lot to, to everyone at TRD. You know, they work really, really hard to give give their drivers and teams, you know, all the resources that, that they can. Um, they've been very beneficial um, to me as a driver and certainly the team this year. You know, I'm new to it my first year with Toyota. And I've just been extremely pleased with, with what they bring to the table and how they operate. Um, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. So yeah, I mean, personally, that would be really cool, right? If, if the four Toyotas that are left can um, execute well in this round of eight and we can, we can lock that thing out, that would be great. So, you know, obviously, I can't really do anything about the other three, right? But uh, if we do our job and if Denny and Martin and Christopher execute as well, you know, I think that's something that's very possible, right? I think it's going to take some wins, but we have the speed to go out there and win. We talked about confidence and, and mindset going into the role, but it feels like that that's kind of just permeated um, throughout the course of the season for you. How have you grown as a driver over the course of uh, this year, particularly joining uh, TRD? Yeah, you know, I still race, I feel like, as hard as I always have, um, but, you know, it's been nice to have the cars um, as good as they are to where I can, you know, I guess think twice about taking the, the really risky choice or making the risky decision on a restart or, or battling for position. So um, it, it's been nice to have that knowing that, okay, if we can't get them this lap, maybe in five laps, maybe on the next restart, maybe at the end of the race, um, you know, it gives me options as a driver. You know, I feel like for a long time uh, in the Cup Series, I had to race really, really hard for every spot, even if it was on like lap five. And, um, you know, I still have that, that drive to do that, but, but it's nice knowing that we have a, car that's capable of overcoming um, track position loss at times. We, we did it a lot this year at the at the spring here, actually, you know, with the issues we had in warm-ups, not getting to practice or qualify, being boxed in on pit road all day. We'd, you know, we'd, we'd lose about 10 spots every time on pit road. So that was a rough day when we were here in the spring. But, but going through those motions earlier in the year, leading into this race, knowing that if that happens, you know, I had to do it every single time we had a caution at Vegas in the spring. So it makes me feel good that things don't go right at some point in the race. You know, I know what to do to get back to the front, too. Uh, Jeff Gluck. Um, 
I know you're a big F1 fan. Have you checked out any of the setup they have going on, and do you think you'll come back for the race in uh, November? I've thought about it, but I'm, I'm sure, like everyone knows, it's going to be expensive. So um, we'll see. Maybe if, you know, things go really good this year, maybe it'll be like, you know, my present to myself. We'll see. Um, I didn't get to see it like you did, obviously, you know, walking through like the, like the main stretch area. I saw that photo you posted. Um, but yeah, when we landed, we drove right by it, and just the amount of construction is insane. Um, you know, you think about how quick we had to be in and out at uh, Chicago and how much they've already – you know, dug in and, and changed the appearance of the strip for this event is pretty wild to see. So, um, yeah, they're going to get some new roads out of it, right? That's cool. But, uh, yeah, the traffic, um, I should have known, right, when we landed, it was going to be a little crazier. I'd heard about it from some friends that had grown, grown up here or still live here. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for the event, right? Um, it has been crazy, like I said, to see how much the strip's kind of changed already. And did you get to check out the Sphere last yeah. night? What, yeah, what I got was that to like? Left. That was really cool. Uh, I got to go hang out with some some good friends. Um, uh, Rick, Sierra Brandt, I've known them for a long time and, and got to go hang out with them and um, see one of my parents, probably one of their favorite bands growing up. I remember when I was a kid, uh, busting into a drawer and finding a bunch of CDs and there was some U2 CDs in there. Um, so I was very familiar with the band. I listened to them quite, uh, quite a bit when I was younger, you know, and I could only really find my parents' music and I'd pop it into the CD player. So. To, to see them perform at the Sphere was pretty wild. Um, you know, for those that haven't been, I mean, you just, I'd say you have to go. It's its quite the experience. Um, it, it's hard to put into words. It's just the, the whole venue is very, you know, just cutting edge, future feeling, and then obviously how they're able to project what they do on the inside, the outside, just the atmosphere, the stage. Um, it was a really wild night. I, I, it was, uh, it was taxing on the eyes. It was certainly, by the time we were done there, I felt like I'd watched like 24 hours straight of television, but it was certainly worth it. I enjoyed it. It was quite the experience. All right, Jerry and then Kelly. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires that net. When the championship, you come back out here, F1 and celebrate, you know? That would, I mean, I, I doubt they're going to roll the red carpet out like that, but, <laughs> but certainly, you know, I'll, I'll find a way to make it happen. I know, you know, something that, that Kurt's talked about, trying to figure something out where all of us could go, and it's just, you know, it's, you know, it's a lot of money, right? I think at that point, I'd almost, if I'm looking at it, right, like you could go, you go out to Europe and go to Silverstone and spend a fraction of the price and probably have a better experience or go somewhere else and see it too. So, um, yeah, I feel like it's going to be a wild time. Um, but, yeah, I guess that's a nice little treat for myself if things go well later this year. Also, coming out of here and going to uh, – to Miami, you know, you, you talk about how good you are here, but you, you know, up there at Miami, you can run the wall, you can run, you know, you kind of get out front and, and, and do your thing. Uh, do you feel like you have a good shot, you know, if, if whatever happens here at Miami is, is a good play for you to win because of the way that you like to race that track? I think, you know, all the teams to, you know, today and this weekend are wanting to win, win here. Um, certainly, others may feel like their backup plan is Martinsville or Homestead. You know, I certainly feel like our backup plan if, you know, um, even if we have a solid day, you know, it'd be nice to win and, and give yourself some time to, to focus on Phoenix. So, yeah, for me, I, I am excited about Homestead, but when I look at our speed this year, you know, this one excites me more, as, as odd as that sounds for me. Um, you know, like I said, my first time on a mile and a half uh, in, in a Toyota and with this team was here, we had an up and down day due to circumstances and we still had a lot of speed. So with all of that, you know, I'm really excited about this one. I know Homestead is one that's been good, great for me, too. Um, but, but, you know, hopefully things go well enough this weekend to where we go into Homestead and we can just worry about having fun. But uh, obviously, someone will get in on points. And uh, we've done a good job of that in the playoffs. So I feel like, you know, uh, this is a good track for me to be able to score points. You know, we scored a lot of points at the beginning of the race at Martinsville in the spring. Um, and I know Homestead's the type of track for me that we can have that ability to score points, too. Kelly. KellyCrandallRacer.com. Tyler, my question is kind of along those same lines. Does it seem like everybody's maybe overlooking you here and just counting on what you're going to do at, at Homestead? I mean, it don't matter. Uh, we're focused on ourselves, right? You know, um, ultimately, that's what we can control. You know, yeah, we got to go race against these other guys, um, the other seven drivers. But, yeah, we just do our deal, kind of like we did at the Roval. You know, I know we, we it, it would have been it's so tempting to just go for the race win, but we needed to focus on what was best for ourselves and our team. 
um, and that's what we've been doing in the playoffs here. So we just we just keep it that. Um, excited to see what we have for speed out of our car um, in about an in about an hour. Uh, certainly excited to see that. It'll be kind of fun being on track or close to being on track around the same time as the eclipse too. So oh, pretty pretty exciting day, honestly. <laughs> the other seven drivers, as you mentioned, how closely have you looked at? who the competition is in, in this round. Did you maybe make any mental notes or just kind of see where everybody stands up after how it played out last weekend? I mean, I think it kind of goes back to just uh, what, what you would normally expect, who's been the fastest. You know, I think throughout the year, there's been some change in who's the dominant car and coming, you know, some guys have gotten better, some have fallen off a little bit. But yeah, I mean, when you're in the race, you know, I'd say in this, especially this first race, right? When you get closer to like maybe, you know, it, more like Homestead and certainly in Martinsville, that's when you start paying attention to the pace of your competition. If you need to do something different strategy, you implement it. But I think for here, it's just kind of go out and run your race, like, you know, maximize your own day. You know, certainly if you feel like you have a really strong car, you're going to be looking and seeing who else has the strong, strong pace and, and where they have the speed as well. But, um, you know, that's just nothing outside the normal that you would do. Uh, for a mile and a half race for us, we're just going to kind of operate like a normal weekend, right? You know, you, uh, I, I guess if, if the opportunity presents itself, right, you'll have to make that tough decision. If there's a caution with, let's say, five to go in a stage, do you flip it and uh, give up the track position or do you take, take the stage points? I'd say that'd be the only situation where you'd have to make that debate. All right, we'll go to Cole and then in the back and then Dustin. Cole Guzman with the Arizona Republic. Uh, similar to what Kelly asked, actually, um, how do you feel you stack up to the competition on mile and a half track, seeing as we've got two in this round of eight? How do we feel we stack up? Mm -hmm. To your round uh, of eight I, competition. Uh, yeah, I feel like we're really solid on mile and a half. You know, it, it, it was, we could kind of see it here at Vegas. Bubba was really um, happy with the handling of his car. Felt like we needed to get a little bit better. And by the time we got back to, uh, you know, the, uh, the World 600, as I like to call it, um, yeah, we were, we were extremely good. You know, I felt like, you know, Blaney was pretty solid, but I just needed to get around him. And I wasn't as funny as it may sound. I wasn't really in a hurry to get around him because I, I knew we were, we were quite a bit better. Um, and ultimately we, at some point in the race, we got damaged. Our floor got destroyed on the car and we lost a lot of, a lot of downforce. And that's why we ended up finishing fifth, sixth. But when things are right and, um, we do our homework and the car is dialed in setup wise, um, when we've been at these tracks, you know, I felt that way about Texas, Kansas, we were pretty good. Denny was a little better there for sure. But uh, when we've had a dial in at these mile and a halfs, um, it's, it's been really, really solid. So looking at the competition um, in this moment, approaching a weekend, not, you're just focused on your car and your team. I'd say, you know, when practice is all said and done, you know, if you're looking at, you know, who's better where, I'd say you're looking at it a little bit just to think about tomorrow's race, but you're not, you know, trying to, completely hone in on one or two teams or drivers at this point. And obviously you have the win at Kansas, but you're also the only driver to lead laps in every mile and a half race this season. What is it about um, these style of tracks and this package that kind of, I guess, suits your, your style? Yeah, I mean, I feel like since day one for me in, in NASCAR racing for, I don't know if it's just because you don't use the brakes a whole lot, but yeah, you know, being the dirt racer that I was, you don't really use I mean, you use the brake to set the car, you know, so short tracks and road courses were certainly not my thing. So, I mean, naturally suiting just my driving style, uh, the mile and a half were great for me from day one. So that in itself helps a lot. And then, you know, last year I had good speed on these tracks, uh, could contend. And then th that just continued into this year with this team. So, yeah, when we come to these tracks, I'm always very excited because you have lots of lanes to choose from. You know, you can run the bottom, you can run the middle, you can run the top, you can split the seams, you know. Uh, when you get up in the top five, especially, it's just it's kind of a guessing game, a chess match, if you will, um, trying to just predict where the car heading is going to go and, and f chasing that clean air so you can keep your momentum up. So it's really fun we come to these tracks because, um, especially this one in particular, you know, if the top gets rolling, you can make speed in the middle or the bottom. Um, you have to be versatile, and I feel like that's something our team does really well. It did well at Charlotte, did well at Kansas, and other tracks. We can move around um, and still have a lot of speed. Brian Twining, uh, Betsverts Media Group. 
I'm, I'm not sure if the drivers or the teams look at race odds, but do you feel any added pressure knowing or just kind of anticipating that you're always amongst one of the favorites week in and week out now that you guys have kind of heightened the expectations for your successes so far in 2023? I mean, I'm only aware of it if I, if, you know, when I'm going through social media, I see it pop up. You know, outside of that, I wouldn't say it really affects the mindset, right, uh, of, of us as drivers. Uh, you know, I guess if anything, it's a nice little, maybe it's a confidence booster if you are the favorite going into the weekend um, for you and your team. But yeah, typically, you know, if we're going somewhere and we feel good about it, um, it seems like we're up there on the odds, I guess. But um, yeah, you know, we've been doing a lot of things right. It's just a matter of putting it all together for us. And um, I feel like we've been doing a good job of that this year. So i um, excited to see how this race goes. All right, and then we're gonna fin up, finish up with one final question from Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, Tyler, this summer, you talked often, you guys talked about not having the execution and not being able to put races together consistently, which in one sense, you don't necessarily have to do in the playoffs, but it helps build that momentum. W other than saying, hey, let's not make mistakes, what is it that's changed in that sense? Uh, or how are you guys avoiding the pitfalls that were slowing you down in the summer now? That's a good question. I think, you know, when you look back at the summer, you know, we had won um, and we were locked in, right? But we were wanting to chase those regular season points and get some playoff points from that. But I guess in the, in the, in the, in the middle of the summer, you have this sense of like, you know, obviously I, I feel like we had a sense of urgency to correct those issues, but we knew we had time till the playoffs started, till Darlington to resolve those issues. And it just seemed like, you know, as, as the clock was running out, um, you know, Every time we would have a critical mistake, it, it hurt more. But it just seemed like when the playoffs came, everyone just was ready and was locked in. And we've been doing a really good job ever since. You know, it's like we were running out of time, and just right, right as it got, as we got in the heat of this thing, we we pulled it together. So obviously, it would have been good to correct it earlier. But hey, I'll take it. Right? You know, we, the playoffs came around, we locked in. You know, those first two races obviously were really strong for us. Um, and, and even though Texas and Talladega didn't go great, I feel like those were days where, you know, a lot of things could have went worse and we did a good job of managing um, the issues that we had. So uh, it feels like, you know, it was, a, it was definitely tough to have those races uh, slip away in the summer, but we certainly learned from all those um, mistakes along the way. And um, I feel like we're operating, uh, you know, right where we need to be right now. All right, thank you, Tyler. Good luck right. this weekend. Thanks.